females in better condition, whereas other people would want one male and heaps of females. So working out how many females to male is good. Some fish pair up, some fish breed in colonies. So understanding them and trying to provide an opportunity that best suits the species you want to breed. So territory, some fish have, most fish have got two dimensional territories, which means they use geographical um, boundaries. Others have three dimensional territories. So fish such as your leptosoma will use geographical territories, but will also, for example, use each other. So I live between this bloke and that bloke which is all quite interesting because some fish actually have three-dimensional territories. So with the three-dimensional ones, their territory may be in reference to each other just as much as in reference to a terrestrial or a um, geographical spot. Um, some fish produce bubble nests. So they'll make a bubble nest and they'll put the sort of conceal the eggs inside the bubbles, such as fighting fish and guamis. Some fish breed in caves, pits or bowers. And they build the nest because they've evolved to think that's a safe place to put their eggs. So various fish have stimulants to make them breed. Sometimes the fish don't breed until you change the temperature. The, you need, often need some sort of environmental change to actually stimulate the fish to breed. Or the presence of sex, like for example if you have a male and female in there for a long time they might not do anything so you take the male out for a while, put the male back in again and then all of a sudden he wants to breed. Now behaviour, so um, when a fish starts behaving in a certain way that might be when they're going to start breeding. It also could be numbers. Some fish might not breed unless there's lots of them. Some fish might not breed unless there's not enough, unless there's just a few of them. Um, you need to understand the nests they might want and provide them with the ability to build the nests they need. Some fish will not breed if the environment is stressful. Some fish will not breed unless their diet's right. So in pr increasing protein for a while or just playing around with diet um, there are also some fish that breed due to a atmospheric we're right. pressures. We're what do you mean? We're, we're late for piano! Piano's at 7.30. It's 6. Yeah, but piano's at 7.30. Hey. <laughs> I thought I had that to do. No, you got like an hour and a half yet. Alright, go back down, sis. <laughs> Don't jump on your bed. So, at, and shut my door. So, atmospheric pressures can um, affect whether fish breed or not. The amount of dissolved oxygen in the water, if there's not enough, um, can affect whether the fish breed. The changes in redox potential can affect whether the fish breed. So, understanding all these stimulants and playing around with them can definitely cause the fish to breed that you didn't think would otherwise breed. Also potassium, some fish, if you increase the potassium in the water can help them breed. So playing around with these individual ones to see what works for your particular fish. Now oxygen is a big one, so making sure you've got very good surface agitation right across the top of your water is very important. And then even doing things like reducing the surface agitation for a while, then turning it back on again. So oxygen changes can be a, a spark temperature different fish breed at different temperatures and changes to temperature subtle changes to temperature often cause the fish to breed um, understanding your water quality thoroughly is a thought so some people will say oh I know my water quality I've tested my pH but actually there's a lot more than just pH that you can test and there are actually labs that you can send your water off to such as Triton we can sell you a Triton test at Majestic Aquariums. We send it off to the lab. It tests a whole heap of stuff and you can understand. So the best thing to do is test it. And then when you fish are breeding, test it again. And you look for any irregularities in the water, which may give you the secret to why that fish bred versus why it didn't. Um, nutrition is pretty much 50% of fish keeping. If you have good quality food, then you've pretty much won the battle. So the quality of the food is everything. Understanding the quantity of the food 
a lot of people overfeed, but you need to understand feeding. Um, how often you feed, the types of food that you feed. Now, you will see visual results when you get all that stuff right. So it's a matter of playing with it. So most fish require approximately the same ratio of nutrients. It's how they harvest and process the food that makes a difference. But once again, try it. Run it for three months. Try something else. If it didn't work, go back to the old one. So light can make a difference. Photo periods, how long the lights are on for. Kelvin rating, intensity of light. So this is all stuff worth playing with that can stimulate the fish to breed, but it can also just allow them to look better. Obviously has a big impact on any plants or corals you might keep. Um, stress. So stress can be physical stress, or stress can also be water quality related, which pretty much has the same um, effect within the fish's body. When the fish goes into stress, various things like um, the immune system may be suppressed, the respiration system, the fight or flight system can be an issue. And you've really got to watch out for fish that could be a bugger. So if you have a fish in there that's harassing your fish at night time, for example, that can cause all sorts of trouble and stop breeding. Also, sometimes fish are just too old. So you'll be quite surprised how short a lot of fish live in the wild compared to how long they live in a fish tank. So it's good to just Google it and see how old the fish most live sort of four to seven years in the wild. Yet in a fish tank, you can get 20 years out of them. So fish do expire. So you try and breed a nice, beautiful fish and then you find it just doesn't breed and it might just be because it's too old. So the biological capacity of an aquarium is everything. So making sure that you have, that you understand what the capacity of your aquarium is and making sure that you have the best media to allow you to have the capacity in your aquarium and understand how the cycles work, the biological cycles, how the bacteria affects the ammonia, nitrite, oxygen and so forth. All worth looking into. So the water volume of your aquarium, the tank, the shape, length, height, also factors into what species you might breed in a, a tank or what you what fish you can breed in that particular tank. So different fish come from different habitats. Some come from planted environments, cavey environments, sand environments. Some fish are used to having a lot of space. Some fish really don't care about space. Also the substrate, um, the material the substrate's made of, the depth of the substrate, the size of the grain, how often it's cleaned, all allows various fish to make their nests and so forth. Once again, if you want to breed a fish that creates a bower, you want to make sure you've got substrate that allows them to do that. Now there's various minerals and trace elements that can also help fish breed. One I named before was potassium. Carbonate, calcium, magnesium and other trace elements can definitely help fish breed. Also putting a type positive charge in the water with Easy Life also can help stimulate various fish to breed. So maintenance routines, how often you change the water, how often you clean the filters, um, how often you clean the glass, how often you, you um, algae clean. So some fish might prefer the tank not as clean. How often you test the water, how often you feed, what supplements you add. All of these will have variance to what fish you're successful breeding. Now redox, if you have good quality filter medias, your redox will tend to be higher. Understanding redox and how the redox works um, in regards to oxidization and so forth is definitely worth looking at. So once again, all these are just suggestions. If you haven't heard of any of these terms, then just look on our channel, which is Majestic Aquariums TV, and just put a word in the search bar and it'll come up with more information on whatever you're talking about. Now, atmosphere is also something because some people will try to breed a fish and you just can't do it. Whereas someone else that might live somewhere else might breed them perfectly. So atmosphere is a variation. And at the end of the day, you can't beat them all. You can't win them all. 
also old tank syndrome some species some tanks over time accumulate hydrogen sulfide particularly through the back of the tank so there are various products such as aquarium detox that will help to eliminate your old tank syndrome so basically some fish will breed quite nicely in tanks that may suffer from old tank syndrome other fish will absolutely not breed unless you rid the old tank syndrome so human interruption some fish will breed quite nicely even if there are people running around other fish will not breed unless they're really left on their own so the creation of new species and extinction is a natural part of life so in order for some species to evolve others sometimes have to become extinct the natural absence of species allows the creation of others and at the end of the day fish do exactly what fish do which is often not what they should do or what you think they should do so sometimes you read about a fish and you do some research and you think oh this fish is going to do this and it absolutely does not because fish don't read the books they don't read internet they just do what they do so your job is to watch them and not judge them if you just watch your fish watch what they do then you'll tend to enjoy them a lot more and you can seek to understand them but just know that they are not computer programs they're not meant to work a certain way we can tell you what normally happens but absolutely not can we tell you what will happen and that's the whole beauty of keeping fish so you will never control your fish but you do have control over them so sometimes if you get a fish that's too aggressive it's just a matter of relocating it getting it out trading it in don't get angry at it because it's just doing what it does you get that same fish put it in another tank it won't cause anyone any trouble so it all the points listed today are considered okay so i'll just read that out so if you consider all these points that i've listed here and i'm sure there's more i believe that any species of fish can be bred i also believe that there are different levels of hobbyist and people will very often say to me oh you're so lucky because you love your job you love fish but i believe that um, passion is governed by knowledge so i think the more you learn about the fish the more you tend to enjoy them and that applies to anything in life so i believe there's what's called number one hobbyists a number one hobbyist really doesn't know anything about the fish they'll come in and say i've got a blue fish a yellow fish and an orange fish what can i put with them a number two hobbyist can at least tell you the names of the fish so they'll come into the shop and they'll say, oh, I've got a Nimbochromus venustus and a whatever. And their friends will think they're an expert because they know the name of a few species of fish. They might only know six fish, but that's okay. They're just a little bit more passionate, a little bit more um, into their fish. And a three hobbyist, number three hobbyist, can not only tell you the true name of the fish, common name, scientific name, but can also tell you a little bit about the fish, a bit about their, their evolution, a bit about how they occupy niches within their natural environment. So I reckon you strive to learn more about your fish and then you enjoy them. I also believe change is king. So you set a tank up and I believe you love it for about a year, then you like it for about a year, then you've seen it, and then it's time to trade it in, start again, and I think that's normal. So I would have a reef tank for a few years until I've mastered it, then go to plant tank, then do a cichlid tank, then go back to a reef tank again. The key is change, I believe. The secret to breeding is to learn and test and measure. So anyway, if you want any more information on any of this stuff that I've been talking about, then just go to Majestic Aquariums TV and in the search bar, just put up um, a keyword and it will come up and tell you about anything you want to learn. I can also be contacted through paul at majesticaquariums.com.au, particularly if you live in Australia. And I'm always happy to answer questions and um, help you out and try and allow you to love and enjoy this hobby as much as I do.